Hey, what's up, folks? Here is the long anticipated video of my anatomy tank. You folks have been asking for an update, and uh, here it is. From beginning, this tank has meant, at least in my book, to be just an easy tank for me to take care of since I do have my big display tank in my living room and on that tank I'm doing all the testing, dosing, dealing with everything else. This tank from beginning was just meant to be straight up easy tank and it was meant for me to separate my anemones, which are two that I love. These are Colorados here and I do have a couple of Chicago's in my display tank over there in the other tank. Since I don't really like to mix anemones, which I kind of talked about in all my other videos, which I'm gonna make sure to link down below so you guys can go and check it out. All my controversial opinions about anemones and mixing them, what they can be sensitive on. In this video, I'm gonna go over what's new in this tank, some new things that has been happening for the first time. All these Colorado anemones that you guys see here in front of you are all males. I'm gonna make sure to drop the exact date here on the bottom of the screen when these anemones spawned, there was a lot of sperm bundles all over the tank. This tank was milky white. It was happening in the evening when lights turned off in this tank. I tried taking a video, but everything was just, you couldn't see through it at all. Since I have UV on this tank, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit later, UV was on, all I did is added some carbon, actually added a lot of carbon in the bag. I just put in the back chamber and tomorrow morning, everything was super clear as you guys can see it right now, basically. There was no difference. Actually, the night after that, I've seen two anemones, it was one or two anemones, they were still releasing some of the sperm as well, but it didn't make tank as cloudy. And I did took a video of that specific anemone on my Instagram, and yeah, if you just follow me here on YouTube, go follow me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, I'm, I'm gonna have descriptions down below for all those. If you wanna see this tank, basically almost every single week I'll post a video. And uh, if you guys have any questions, you can either drop them here down below or either message me on Instagram, Facebook. And most of the questions that you guys be asking is about how I have my lighting set up, what I have going on for flow, what I'm using for salt. So I'm just gonna go and just try to cover all that really quickly in this video. So basically what I do run in this tank, XR50, Gen 4 Pro and I do run it right now it's on 100% I did have it running on 90 something percent but I raised it up all the way basically half a day I have a full spectrum the other half a day I have it running just on blues as far as salt what I'm using I'm using Red Sea Blue Bucket I'm doing water changes on a monthly basis sometimes when I do skip a water change next month I'll do a little bigger water change and that's about it as far as filtration goes I do have Refugium on the back and I do have a UV sterilizer. I used to use Aqua UV, were great, but it was kind of on the side of the tank. It didn't really look as good uh, since it didn't really have a place to hide it well in this tank, but I had that one for a couple of years. I believe the unit that I had was 50 watt. And then uh, this current UV sterilizer is from Innovative Marine and I do have it on the back chamber set up and that way it's out of the way. You cannot even see it, that it's there, but it's there. I do run UV 12 hours every single day. I do run it from eight o'clock in the evening to eight o'clock in the morning. Sometimes I do turn off my UV completely. Sometimes it's on all the time, which just depends what I'm doing. For instance, when I add a new fish, I'll turn it on all the way. Or if I see that enemies are stressed for any reason whatsoever, I'll turn on UV right away. So it's on throughout the day. Since I'm mentioning UV, I would like to talk about Colorado's and mixing Colorados with other anemones. I believe they're one of the most sensitive anemones BTS out there since, <laughs> to be quite honest, these dudes are even sensitive. If you have lots of pages in your tank, they'll start to act up. Lots of people are being texting back and forth after I posted my initial video about mixing enemies, and I've seen that a lot of folks that have their nemes with even a lot of torches, a lot of hammers, a lot of your affiliates, they won't do good, or if it's a lot of soft coals, they won't do good. So far, I haven't seen none of them die because it's mixed with those type of corals, but they tend not to look so good. They tell to drink up and just not do so well. If you do have UV, UV sterilized is going to take care of that 100%. You guys can tell that added some macroalgae in this tank. On the left side, you can see Calerpa prolifera, 
And then on the right side of the back, I do have some as well over there. And then I do have some calcium based algae, which I believe they're called a Heliod, uh, something like that. I'm going to make sure to post the name since I'm pretty new in the macroalgae game. Sorry about that. Tell your folks that <laughs> you're macroalgae. Obviously, everyone knows about uh, Dragon's Breath, which is red algae you see on the right side. And I do have Refugium all the way on the back and the back chamber, which I do have a uh, Tansy waterproof. That purple type, I know they have two type. One is just full spectrum, the other one's kind of purple for plant growth. Don't have none of the Cheeto inside this tank, just on the back chamber. But yeah, what I've noticed about macroalgae and anemones, they have zero issues being right next to one another. They don't sting one another. They just play very well. I will say, if you're a beginner and you're interested in setting up your first ever reef tank, you might want to watch some of the, let's say, beginner videos, how to set up saltwater tank, of course, and then uh, watch this video, watch some of my older videos as well as far as an enemy goes. I think that macroalgae, anemones, and of course, if you don't have Colorados, if you have some of the rainbows, those you can mix, no problem, with some of the soft corals, and just have a very easy reef tank for you to take care of. This tank is very, very easy. All I'm taking care of is temperature and salinity. Don't ask me about this. I don't test anything in this tank. I don't test for alkalinity, nitrate, phosphates. I don't know those numbers since I just don't care about them. Macroalgae, at least the amount that I have and the ones I have seems not to care about it. An enemies definitely don't care about it. All an enemies care is just highlighting kind of medium to low flow. And honestly, if you don't mix them, you'll have zero issues, <laughs> basically zero issues. And that's one of the reasons I haven't really making lots of videos about this tank since this tank hasn't changed much, really. That's it. You guys are seeing my previous videos that I talked about this tank. I mean, that's it. I um, got rid of some of the fish in this tank. I'm thinking of adding a pair of clowns. When I do find uh, some pretty clowns, I might add a pair. I actually never had a successful reef tank without a tank, so that's why my mimic tank is there, just making sure there's no algae growing everywhere. If you're interested in growing macroalgae, the bristle tooth tanks are a perfect option since they won't touch your macroalgae. Actually, he is taking care of all the macroalgae that kind of gets white, gets pale, it's dying, he tends to eat those, which is kind of perfect for me. So I have to get rid of those. So when algae starts dying, he'll munch on those, but he won't touch the healthy pieces of the algae at all. At one point, I had this tank covered in Calerpa prolifera, but it was all over the place. Since I had so many on the floor in my sand bed growing, my enemies moved a little bit further up of the rocks. I didn't really like that since this is enemy tank, first of all, and then macroalgae kind of just fits this tank team, which again, it was it's an enemy tank, it's just a simple tank to take care of, which me getting rid of some of the fish and adding some of the macroalgae basically made my life even easier and my maintenance even easier for this tank at least. I've seen lots of folks are just getting out of the hobby and I totally understand that. This is me getting out of the hobby. I got rid of a couple of fish, added some macroalgae, and now there's even less work <laughs> for this tank since I don't want to cast and do the whole shebang that I'm doing with my other mixed reef tank, everything that I'm making sure that it's all right for my acroporas, all the micro elements and all the other things, which are great. But yeah, I just don't want to do that twice. I'm fine with it just once in one system, but this system is just easy peasy. So I wanted to go over real quick, what's my maintenance on this tank? As I mentioned, the monthly water changes, I'll clean the glass on this tank probably once a week. I do have red mangroves, which I spray again probably once a week. Usually the mangroves that you have to spray, the leaves, are the black and white mangroves. Red mangroves, they don't release that salt particles on their leaves. All I've seen that salt will appear is on the branches and not really on the leaves. So yeah, that's sometimes I'll skip to spray them and they, they honestly do great. I had a couple of people ask me where I'm getting my mangroves. All my mangroves that I have are from Florida. There's lots of sellers that you can purchase mangroves from. You can look them up on eBay. Just look up red mangroves. I'm pretty sure you're gonna find some online. What I do have for ATO in this tank, I do have a Hanzi ATO. And underneath this tank, I do have a big 33 gallons uh, brew trash container, which basically this tank with all the rocks and everything that's in this tank, it's probably around 30 something gallons. Since this is auto box, 40 gallons, only one. And with me having that big of an ATO container, 
I think I have to refill that container every three to four months. I'm not sure since every single time <laughs> I refill it. I kind of forget when it was the last time I've done it. That's one of the reasons I've chosen the all-in-one tank in this case, since I didn't want to have sump or nothing around the tank. I just wanted to have a big ATO container, no sump, so I should have space to put my big container underneath the tank. Since, uh, yeah, I knew right off the bat that I won't be needing a lot of fluctuation in this tank. I think I had a skimmer one point i'll say none of the smaller skimmers that are meant for all-in-one tanks work so great maybe if you want to bump up filtration for tanks like this maybe perfect way of doing it is just have maybe a neptune dose or ecotech versus pump just do automatic water changes and you can take care of your tank like that or honestly if you have smaller tank than this or up to 40 gallons as i said it's pretty easy to do a water change and if you have all the creatures and corals in your tank just needs to take care of that's that's gonna be it i had a few folks asking what i'm using to feed these anemones on the top i do have automatic feeder which feeds uh, pellets that's just once a day obviously that's for fish but a lot of those pellets will get pushed by mp10 and then the golden nems and the nems will eat those pellets 100 and then i do like the food it's called a seafood mix that i get from aldi and I'll grab that, defrost, cut it up, and just feed my nems. And I do that maybe every other week, once a month type of deal. Sometimes I do more often, sometimes I don't. Since I'm kind of good with the amount of anemones I have in this tank. At one point I had a lot of enemies, and then they'll start walking everywhere, they'll walk on my overflows, they'll walk into MP10, and I just decided to sell some of them. And of course, if you want to buy an enemy, the description down below, I'm going to put my website. You can check them out over there. And then I just end up trading most of them for some other coils, which I put in my display tank. I trade a lot of them for torches and some other coils as well that I just started collecting. One thing that I forgot to mention, since I talk about sensitivity of Colorado BTAs, when I was adding some of the macroalgae, I unfortunately added some of the aptasias into this tank. Of course, there's nothing inside the tank, as you guys can tell, since there's not a lot of room for them to even uh, grow in this tank, but I do have a couple of peppermint shrimps and they'll take care of those. And, but I do have a lot on the back. And since I had my UV sterilizer off for a while, since I had a feeling that they didn't really need it, when those aptasias started multiplying, when I started having a lot of them on the back, I noticed that my Colorados started declining. And as soon as I turned back on that UV sterilizer, they came back the next day. Now, plenty of folks won't even believe that this happened since you really won't notice when you run UV sterilizer with other corals. I do run UV sterilizer on my mixed reef tank and I haven't noticed any big difference in my other corals when I turn on or off UV sterilizer. But on this tank, and as far as NAMs go, they react to it like, I cannot even explain it. And if you really have aptasias in your tank, soft corals, LPS corals, if you have some other corals that you think are bothering your anemones, get yourself a UV, turn it on, and let me know in the comments down below how that went for you. I never try ozone reactor. It might be your other option as far as sterilizing your tank. I never tried it, and I have a feeling that ozone is a little bit more dangerous, especially because most of us have tanks indoor. Since I have experience with UV sterilizer, and uh, since it's not dangerous to use at all, that's why I suggest if you have an enemy tank, or if you have an enemies in your mix reef tank, try UV sterilizer and let me know in the comments how that went for you. Since I have this experience with this tank, I cannot talk more good about UV sterilizers. Basically, that's my bread and butter for making an enemies nice and healthy. Of course, as long as you take care of the basics, salinity temperature, strong lighting, medium flow, everything's on point. Again, pretty easy stuff to take care of. If you have UV sterilizer, that'll help a lot. Feed your enemies. that's about it. Plenty of people ask me, what's your secret recipe in taking care of these nems? That's it. Just listen to what I just said, apply it, and uh, let me know how it went. All right, that's about it, folks. If you guys have any questions, as I said, just drop them down below. Down below I have a link for my website as well, we can purchase these NEMs. I have down below links for all of my other socials, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Go check me out over there as well. And uh, yeah, that's about it. See you guys in the next one. Peace.